Hi, my name is Mark Mandel with Developer Relations at Discord. Today, we're diving deeper into a fundamental aspect, server structure. Getting this right from the start sets the stage for clear communication, easy navigation, and a thriving player base. You're not just hosting general discussions, you're managing vital activities such as alpha and beta tests, collecting detailed feedback, running early access programs, announcing new patches, and shaping a dedicated community invested in your game success. A well-organized server structure allows you to create dedicated spaces for those different functions, control who has access to what information, and ensure the valuable feedback doesn't get lost in the shuffle. It's about creating a functional space that supports both your community and your development workflow. Let's begin by creating your server. When you start, you have the option to begin with a template or create your own from scratch. Exploring templates can be a great way to see common structures for gaming communities and can spark some ideas for how you might want to structure your server. Another great place to get inspiration from is by checking out the server discovery tab. Many developers find it helpful to see how other game servers are structured when modeling their own. However, for this guide, we're starting by selecting Create My Own. This gives you complete control over your server structure from the ground up, allowing you to tailor it precisely to your game and community specific needs. It provides the deepest understanding of how categories and channels work together. In this example, we will be creating a large community for our game, so we'll want to click the For a Club or Community option. Give your server a clear, memorable, and engaging name that represents your game. And make sure to upload a server icon for your game, company, or brand. In the settings section, you will find your server description. Your server description is your opportunity to tell potential members what your community is all about. Be concise, engaging, and highlight what makes your server unique for the players of your game. Let them know what kind of community they will find and what they can do when they get there. Don't miss out on another crucial feature, server traits. Traits are descriptive tags that help categorize and identify your server's focus areas. These tags make it easier for potential members to find communities that match their interests. To unlock powerful tools designed for managing and growing a community server, you'll want to enable community features. This is a crucial step for game developers looking to fully leverage Discord's available features. In the server settings menu, scroll down the left sidebar and click on Enable Community. Click the Getting Started button. Discord will guide you through a few essential steps. You'll need to designate channels for rules and guidelines and a channel for community updates or moderator-only communication. Ensure your server adheres to Discord's community guidelines. Once finished, your server will have community access enabled and when you hit 1,000 members, you'll unlock powerful features such as server discovery, community insights for analytics, and more robust moderation capabilities, to name a few. Now that your server is set up and has community features enabled, let's build its internal framework with categories. Categories are the main structural beams of your server. They organize and contain your channels and guide members to the right conversations with ease. A well-planned category system prevents clutter and makes your server feel intuitive and welcoming. For a game developer, these aren't just arbitrary groupings. They're strategic divisions that help segment your community's activities and feedback streams. To establish a category, simply right-click anywhere in this left-hand channel sidebar and select Create Category. Let's think tactically about the categories a game community might benefit from. For this example, we'll continue setting up the community categories for our game. A welcome category is essential as the first point of contact, housing your rules and a clear welcome message. For general player interaction, a community lounge category provides space for casual chat and off-topic discussions. Looking for groups and fan art groups could also find their home here. Crucially, create a category dedicated to direct game engagement, perhaps game discussions competitive. This is where you could break down conversations by game mechanics, lore, or specific features players care about. You could have a segment focused on another predominant group in your game. Let's say game discussions casual. To manage player input effectively, a help and feedback category can be helpful with channels for structured bug reporting and suggestions. 
Within category settings, you'll find options for permissions. This is where you can make categories private, restricting access to specific roles, essential for internal dev discussions, or private testing groups. With your tactical categories in place, let's populate them with channels. A channel lives within your category and are the specific spaces for different types of communication interaction. There's a variety of different channel types to choose from, from voice and text to live streaming stages. Let's dive in. Choosing the right channel type for the intended conversation is key to keeping discussions focused and valuable. Text channels are your standard chat rooms for written discussion, sharing links, and images. Use them for general chat, specific topic discussions, or sharing updates. Voice channels enable real-time voice communication and are vital for players teaming up to play together. To manage structured feedback like bug reports or suggestions without conversations getting lost, Forum channels are a game changer, creating an organized threads for each submission. Examples include bug submissions or feature requests. With announcement channels, you can broadcast important updates to all of your members as well as outsiders previewing your server. Whether you're sharing critical information or engaging your audience, these channels help you reach everyone who needs to stay informed. And for large scale, one-to-many presentations or events, Stage channels provide a controlled broadcast environment ideal for hosting live voice events and Q&As. Now let's strategically add channels to our categories. When you automatically create a channel, you'll want to reorganize appropriately by dragging it to the proper category. When you converted your server into a community, it auto-populated a rules text channel for you. You'll want to move that channel under the welcome category. Here you can also add an announcements channel. For Community Lounge, let's create general and off-topic text channels. You can also include your rank and a looking for group voice channel. In Game Discussions Casual, you can add text channels for specific aspects like gameplay tips, lore theories, or fan showcase. For help and feedback, set up a bug reports and suggestions as forum channels, and add a technical support text channel. Keep in mind that these are just examples. You can create your own types of channels depending on what your game needs are. Don't feel pressured to create every possible channel at once. Start with the most essential ones based on your community's initial needs and your development priorities. Then expand incrementally. Always use clear, descriptive channel names and consider using emoji or Unicode at the beginning for quick visual identification. As your server evolves, you may want to create an archive category to house older, non-essential, or dated channels. Expanding further, consider creating a dedicated category like private testing. Within this, you would create channels specifically for your testers, perhaps a tester chat text channel for general discussion and a test build feedback forum channel for structured input. These channels would typically be private, accessible only to members with a specific tester role. This is a prime example of how permissions work with categories to create controlled areas within the server, a topic we explore in another video in this series. Your server structure also lays the groundwork for integrating apps. While we'll dedicate an entire video to exploring the power of apps, a well-organized server makes it easier to configure apps to interact with specific channels for things like automated moderation, social media notifications, or in-game data feeds. As we saw with SuperVive from Theorycraft Games, their effective use of Discord for playtesting and feedback was built on a solid server architecture that provided clear spaces for different community interactions and development needs. Thinking strategically about your categories and channels from the beginning will pay dividends as your community grows. If you're interested in learning more about what Theorycraft Games did with their server, feel free to check out the link in their case study in the description below. Now you've learned how to design and build the foundational structure of your Discord server using categories and channels, thinking tactically about how they serve your game and community. Before we go, 
Here's a launch checklist from the developer playbook, which covers much of what we just walked through. We also have a link to the playbook in the description below. Thanks for joining us for this guide on Discord server structure for game developers. Stay tuned for more videos in this series to help you empower your game community on Discord. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one.